We imagine a future. And our imaginings horrify us. So Oppenheimer at its core tells the story of a chain reaction started by the creation of the atomic bomb. Early on in the film, the scientists working on it worry that setting off a nuke might actually set fire to the atmosphere and inadvertently destroy us all. This is something that greatly worries our titular character upon the theory being posed. Rushing out to Albert Einstein with the calculations, he asks whether building the bomb could kill us all, and this is something that comes full circle at the end of the film. Now I have to say that the movie left a major impression upon me and upon leaving the theatre, its final shot has stuck with me. It's haunting for a number of reasons and throughout this video I want to discuss why it's so impactful. This will go over the meaning of it, the thematic elements in play and how it all comes together to bring us the perfect ending. Heavy spoilers ahead so if you haven't checked out the movie then I highly recommend that you check out now. If you agree with us then please hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe for videos like this every day. By the way, huge thank you for clicking this, now let's get into the ending of Oppenheimer. Now the movie closes out with Oppenheimer meeting with Albert Einstein and they end up discussing what could happen in the future. It's a conversation that's been teased throughout the film and it's something that's also haunted a character we'll talk about later on. Oppenheimer ends up being completely rocked by it and he realises that his creation has now escaped his control. Now what I love about the film is that once he's built the bomb, he becomes absolutely powerless in stopping it from being used. Now the cat's out the bag, the entire world will eventually get their hands on it and it could potentially lead to the destruction of our planet. Now Oppenheimer is someone who has an endearing personality and because of this he's been able to win lots of people around. Throughout the film he watches people happily fall in line with him and he very much showcases the cult of personality. This is in all aspects of his life and we see it ranging across a number of things that happen. Whether it's the women he meets, the communist party, the teacher union meetings or Los Alamos itself, he's great at gaining people who will follow right behind him. However, Einstein correctly guesses that this won't last for long and that the government will use him up and then spit him out. He then predicts that they'll eventually parade him around but it'll be a self-serving way to give themselves a pat on the back. This is something that happened in real life too, with Oppenheimer being ostracised before he was welcomed back. Even recently, Joe Biden's administration has overturned the hearing decision and he's now seen as someone who was a hero to his people. But it wasn't always the case and the final film's hour centers around showing how people turned on him. Now I want to discuss this all more in just a second but firstly let's go over the final shot and what they really signify. With Einstein the pair talk about that initial chain reaction and Oppenheimer realizes it may just be a delayed one. Initially they thought the Trinity test might wipe things out but the destruction of the world might now be inevitable. Oppenheimer is seen as an equivalent to Prometheus and now the toothpaste's out the tube, you can't put it back in. As a student he watched rain falling into puddles and he was plagued with visions of things he didn't fully understand. However, come the end of the film, he finally gets his head around it and knows that by building the bomb he may have set us on a dark path. As he watches the rain hitting the pond, this then transforms into nuke sites and he imagines watching missiles lighting up the sky. It's haunting stuff and to make matters worse, we now know that the protests for a hydrogen bomb have fallen on deaf ears. The whole movie itself is somewhat of a ticking time bomb and those raindrops in the puddle have now built up to this. It brings everything full circle from those opening moments and shows a chain reaction will engulf the entire planet. Now, all of this destruction is based around the idea of escalation which is something thematically that builds throughout the film. Though the Soviets are allies, there's always the idea that once they have the nuke, they might become the enemy. Escalation is something that's plagued every single conflict and it's something that can be seen across the entire globe. Nolan has talked about this in his films before and it was something that showed up in Batman Begins. Gordon argued that if police started carrying knives, that the criminals would then end up having to carry guns. This would then lead to them having to buy Kevlar vests which would lead to the criminals buying armor piercing rounds. Batman was seen as the next step up which would lead to mass criminals now running the streets. Now that of course came in the form of the Joker and in our world Batman is basically the nuke. Now that America has one, the rest of the world will try and at least match them but more times than not they'll try and build bigger ones. 
This ends up eventually creating the hydrogen bomb, a far more devastating explosive with even more power. This being out in the world could lead to people trying to make a bigger one, and eventually we'll hit a point where we get a world ending device. Now if you've ever read Watchmen you'll know a similar thing happens there, with Dr. Manhattan changing how warfare is handled. Russia is jealous that the US have their own Superman, which causes them to stockpile even more arms. This leads into a cold war that's about to go hot, and you wonder whether nukes being brought to the table will lead to our destruction. Looking at the film, they actually have a debate within it whether it's better to just give the Soviets the plan so that there's not a monopoly. In the movie, they talk about the scientist Fuchs, who in real life was the person that handed over the secrets. Now looking at history, he actually got caught, but he argued that he did this for the right reasons. Fuchs stated that the Russians should have the bomb because it's at least a way to help level the playing field. Now whether you agree or disagree is another thing entirely, but this move vastly changed how wars were fought. From this point onward, we've mainly had cold wars where there's always a threat the other side could fire back. This keeps our hands off the trigger, and instead of there being nukes flying everywhere, espionage and spying tends to be how things are fought. Oppenheimer says that the atomic bomb should make it so we never have to have a war again, and there is the argument that it de-escalated things too. Now, whether you agree or not it is another debate, but I actually realise that Strauss somewhat represents the Russians. Watching this, you're probably thinking, what does he mean, but let's look at how the conversation with Einstein is framed. Strauss sees it going on, but he isn't part of it, and he starts to suspect that Oppenheim is his enemy. This creates a major vendetta in him that he then begins to use as a way to discredit and destroy his reputation. Now this is all caused by paranoia and fear because he doesn't exactly know what's going on with them. They saw a country working on making incredible advancements that they themselves were not allowed to be a part of. Ignored just like how Einstein ignored Strauss, they then put their plans in place to take them down in covert ways. The secrets to the bomb were gained with double agents and backhanded moves just like what Strauss carries out on Oppenheimer. At the end of the movie it's revealed that he manipulated everything and he was very much paramount in Oppenheimer's downfall. He represents someone who believes they can strike an act without repercussions which is also what's symbolic of how the nuke is used. We never actually see them hitting their targets and though I've seen complaints I think this strengthens the movie. Everything's supposed to be shown from Oppenheimer's perspective and it shows just how removed he is from the bomb's usage. Now had Strauss overheard the Pong conversation, he would of course realise it didn't have anything to do with him. Still though this shows how paranoia and fear can drive one to act in extremely irrational ways. He is very much the Salieri to Mozart but I think he also represents the world's reaction to nukes. Not knowing something causes them to go out using underhanded tactics and in the end it creates even more tension. Knowing Russia have been testing bombs causes Strauss to look at Oppenheimer, even though we know he wasn't complicit in them getting them. Now to me, the idea of fear is played out perfectly in the end, with Oppenheimer being at the heart of what he's created. The entire film feels like it's a runaway locomotive racing away and able to be fully stopped. Nolan has stamps, clicks and so on appearing in the soundtrack and this gives the idea that it's also like a train. Works really well to build at this final moment where he realises that he's no longer in the driver's seat. When meeting Truman we see that Oppenheimer is the only one who really understands it, but those with the power to use it now don't really care. Oppenheimer says that he can't get the blood of his hands, which Truman sees as meaning that he's weak and a complete crybaby. This is something that was apparently said in real life as well, and it kind of shows the short sightedness that the leader had. Rather than seeing what the bomb could lead to, he was just focused on having the power. This is something that Oppenheimer has stripped away at the end and he's now going to be used as a puppet in a pawn. For standing up against the hydrogen bomb he's going to be humiliated and once the debate's over he'll be paraded around. He's no longer got the power that he once had and he's imagining the nukes powerless to stop them. Actually see lots of similarities in Nolan himself who was of course taken for granted by the studio Warner Brothers. He moved to Universal and has now made a massive hit, whilst that company's hemorrhaging money left, right and centre. Now when looking at why this ending is so devastating, you have to actually look at the man himself. Oppenheimer was just a professor at a university, and he ended up making something that killed hundreds of thousands of people. He wasn't a politician, and he wasn't a soldier, he was just a man who had a fascination with chemistry. Now he's become the destroyer of worlds, which is another quote that I want to put focus on. The destruction of the entire world could end up being next unless he stands at the pond shaken by his imagination. 
His imagination is what plagued him as a student, but it's now gone far beyond his deepest and darkest nightmares. He's created something that will forever be a blight on humanity, and even today, there's still the worry of nukes being used. If you weigh up the pros and cons of the bombs, I think the negatives vastly outweigh the positives, and yeah, there's always going to be this worry that they're going to be used. There's also the debate over whether they should have actually dropped the bomb in the first place, which further plays into Oppenheimer's anxiety. Germany had been defeated and Japan was on its last legs, which has made people debate over whether the two should have been detonated. Oppenheimer realises though that these weapons are built to be used and that curiosity with the hydrogen bomb may get the better of us. So far, it's only ever been tested, but if a country ever got to the point of losing a war, then they might just fire one off. It's very, very depressing to think about and it definitely weighs on you as you walk out the movie. For saying that, I love this conversation that they have at the pond because Einstein's the only person that Oppenheimer can relate to. He's the only man in the science community who has the knowledge that he does and he's the only other person who also has the fame. Both stand at the pond helpless to change the future before he walks away just leaving Oppie. This is when all his visions come full circle from that opening scene and he realises the Pandora's box that he's just opened. Will this weapon eventually lead to the destruction of the world? Well, I think that's something that we're just going to have to see. Ever since caveman created clubs, humanity's built bigger and better weapons and it won't be too long before we advance on what we have. That's what the ending of Oppenheimer really means and it still leaves me shaking the, the more that I think about it. All in all, this is the kind of feeling that I want to have when leaving a film and that's why I think the ending of Oppenheimer's perfect. It's something that sticks with you, it's going to change the way that you look at the world and probably also make you value the things that you have around you. Hold your family tight tonight, it's a bit depressing, but you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and yeah, lots of things going on that I think make this movie so impactful. Obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the film, so make sure you comment below and let me know. Please drop a like and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society then please click the join button because we really appreciate it. You'll get early access to videos every single week and it goes such a long way to helping us out. Now if you want something else to watch we've got a full breakdown of Oppenheimer's life which will be linked on screen right now. We go over his full story in chronological order and also talk about what happened after the events of the film. But out of the way, huge thank you for sitting through the video. I've been Paul and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.